Hi guys, if you are a special education teacher, make sure you click the subscribe button down below. My YouTube channel is all about helping special education teachers with teaching ideas, classroom management, basically everything special education. So if that interests you, click the subscribe button. All right, today's video is all about math centers. Math centers are kind of a hot topic right now, so I'm pretty excited to be doing a video on it. I'm going to be talking about all of my life skills math class math centers ideas. So if that interests you, continue to watch. Math centers are an awesome way to differentiate throughout your classroom and for sure meet the needs of all of your students. That's why I love them and I think that's why so many different teachers love them also. So before I begin, all of my math center ideas are going to be linked down below in the description. There are a few different ways that you can do math centers. The three ways that I have tried are tubs, um, file folders, and then I've done stations. So file folders, in my opinion, are kind of outdated. That was kind of probably like the first idea anyone ever had for math centers um, or just centers in general. They work really great for some students, but just in my experience, I think that there's ways that you can do it better. So I have um, also done tubs, and tubs really are great because you can sit down, plan all of your tubs, and all of them will just be planned and always there for your students. You can also level them. But today I'm mostly going to be talking about stations. They're still like math centers though. Um, I basically just set up five different stations around the classroom. And it, I call it my life skills day, and we do this every other Friday. So on the off Friday, we do a game day that incorporates math and social skills because I'm really big on teaching my students in special education social skills or just giving them the opportunity to practice their social skills. So anyways, every other Friday, game day versus life skills, math. I'm actually really curious, how often do you guys do your math centers or your math stations? Um, like I said, I do mine every other week, so I'm just really curious. Some people might do them every week. I know depending on your settings, some people might incorporate them throughout their day, every single day. In my situation, students would come to their math class, they would come to me for only 50 minutes a day. So math centers aren't something that I wanted to do every day. But anyways, comment below. I'm really curious to see how you all run your classroom. The way I would start off my centers was to always have a timer going on my smart board. There's a lot of different cool smart board timers that you can get. Just Google it, um, smart board timer, and you will find one. These are awesome and definitely game changers because a lot of students with autism really like um, that routine and they also like to know what's going to happen, when exactly it's going to happen. So timers are really great for all students, honestly, and for me too, to keep track of time. Depending on how many students I have in that math period or that math class, I will either have students just individually at each math center or, um, like I said, I love to incorporate social skills, so the more that I can put my students together, the better. Um, so I would have two or three students per station or per center. I would typically assign um, a high student with a low student. And because I really truly feel like students learn more from each other than they even learn from me as a teacher. So this was one of my best strategies and I really saw improvement in those lower kiddos. And that, you know, the students that were higher academically, they enjoyed teaching those students and they enjoyed collaborating with those students too. So every single week I would have five math stations or centers, life skills math based. So here are the five. I'm going to look over here at my paper so I don't forget. So the first one was money. Money, of course, in life skills is super important for our students to learn about and practice. Next was telling time, basic facts, budgeting. And then the fifth one, I kind of did a combination of other really important math skills um, that aren't like huge topics. So like measurement, fractions, place value, word problems. I also really like to teach students to write out numbers and word forms um, for writing checks. And I know that writing checks is kind of an outdated thing, but I also still really love to teach it because it teaches our students the importance of knowing how much is in your bank account, knowing if it is more or less than what you want to purchase, things like that. Next, I want to just give a couple examples of each math center that I would do. Every single week, I would switch it up. I would have a paper with all of the math centers I was going to do with week one, incorporating math, telling time, all of those five topics I just talked about. 
And then the following week, for week two, I would have all of those same topics, but a different activity or a different center within each one. And then for week three, same five topics with a different center in each one. So I had a total of five weeks planned. After five weeks, I would switch back to week number one and I would just rotate those. And of course, if I came up with other ideas throughout the school year, I would definitely throw them in there. Love to switch things up. For money, here are a couple center ideas. My students love to play the dollar dice game. If you don't know what that is, you can watch my other YouTube video called Five Best Money Games. Another center idea for money is task cards, of course, which I'm sure you all are familiar with. Let's move on to telling time. So with telling time, one of my students' favorite and actually um, a pretty simple math center idea is to have a clock and then, so one student has a clock and one student has a whiteboard. So the student with the whiteboard will write down any random time and then the student with the clock will show that time on the clock and then the students rotate. The next math center for telling time that I would do with my students includes a computer um, or the smart board or a laptop or whatever you have, a tablet. And this is an already prepared game. It's called This or That and it has a clock on it and then it has two different times next to it and the students choose this time or that time. And the two students or the three students work together and talk about which time is correct. You can also, if you have a little space in your classroom, you can have students move to that side of the room um, if it doesn't bother the other students too much, however you wanna do it. Another um, telling time math center idea is a worksheet that is called Color the Clocks. The students are supposed to color certain times a certain color, so 835 needs to be red, so students will find the clocks that have 835 on it and color them all red. My students really love this activity. Even though they're, they were high schoolers, they still love coloring. Next we'll move on to basic facts. So a couple ideas for basic facts are cut and paste activities and then also matching activities. What I would do is laminate my matching worksheets and then I would have students use a dry erase marker to complete the activities. This way you don't have to waste paper. You can reuse them over and over and over. Just for some reason using a dry erase marker is so much cooler than using a boring pencil if you know what I mean. Next is budgeting. So for budgeting, I would have, I would always have a check writing scenario. I think I got this off of Unique Learner if you have access to that. So it tells you how much you need to take out and then you need to balance your checkbook. I made sure that every single one of my students had their own checkbook and I actually contacted a local bank and asked if they had any old checkbooks that they could donate to our classroom and thankfully one of the banks did so it was pretty cool for each student to have their own checkbook. Of course they had void all over them so they weren't real checks or anything. My students enjoyed how it felt real life to them that they had their own checkbook and a lot of students don't have their own checkbook in real life. It's kind of cool for them to feel independent and you know I try to make my math class as real world as possible. A couple other ideas for budgeting for in math centers. I really like teaching the topics of do I have enough money and making change. So you could either do a packet or I love to do an around the classroom scavenger hunt with my students for these two topics. Around the room I would place a task card and then I would have a recording sheet where the students would find the task card and then they would record it on, um, they would record the answer on their recording sheet. My students love to get up and move because they do sit in their seats all day long being in high school. So it makes me kind of sad. So the more you can get your students moving, the better. All of my scavenger hunts are linked down below also. My last station, my fifth station, incorporated a bunch of different math topics, a different one every single week. I had fractions, measurement, place value, word problems, writing numbers in word form, for measurement, for example, I would use a rice table and have students measure out um, the set amount. If you had time, you could have students actually make something simple um, with their measurements, like cookies or whatever you want. For fractions, another example of a math center is drag and drop activities. So either on a computer or an iPad or even on your smart board, you could put a fractions drag and drop math center on it. Students will drag the correct fraction um, to the correct place on the slide or they can just color in the fraction, um, whatever the directions say. That is linked down below. So now I just quickly want to go over all of the math centers that we just talked about and I also want you to realize that you can use all of these math centers within any of these topics that I just listed. Okay, let me read from my paper. So we have task cards, around the classroom scavenger hunts, drag and drop Google Slides activities, 
the dollar dice game, this or that games, kaboom games, I forgot to mention that one, but I will link them down below, cut and paste worksheets, laminate matching worksheets, whiteboard activities, um, and then lastly, I mentioned the color of the clocks. You can also do color the coins, color the dollar bills. I have a free color the coins activity that is linked down below. It's identifying coins names, coin names, and coin value. So make sure you check that out. If you liked any of these activity center ideas, make sure to check them out in the description and you can purchase them from my Teachers Pay Teachers store. They're all basically no prep and ready to go to make your life easier. Also, I have linked a free math class weekly outline. If you're interested in that, you can grab that too. If you have any other math center ideas that you'd like to share with me, please leave a comment and tell me about them down below. If you like this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that bell so that you get notifications whenever I post a new video. I have videos twice a month, usually every other week. Please follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and I have a Pinterest. If you are a life skills math teacher, you can join my Facebook group that is called Special Education Life Skills Math. We have a ton of teachers on there that you can collaborate with and get more resource ideas from. Thank you all for watching. I hope you have a great week. Happy teaching!